the last substantive video that we have for this week of nonlinear interactions. So we've built up to where we talked about interactions being multipli the multiplication of two predictors, two distinct predictors. And then we slowly moved over to, after interpreting the effects and all of that, we moved over to uh, polynomials where we have the same variable, the same predictor multiplied against one another to be able to test for non-rectilinear relationships. But what happens when we have these non-rectilinear relationships among a, a primary predictor like x, and we also have a moderator, so a separate variable that now interacts with these non-rectilinear terms. So uh, before, what I did is I created my data set, so I explicitly modeled in a moderator. So I have a moderator that is a main effect. It also interacts with the linear component, it interacts with the quadratic component, and it interacts with the cubic component. So I should be able to replicate uh, the main effects for both the moderator as well as the interaction between my moderator variable and all those polynomial terms. And I can show you that indeed this is sort of like shooting fish in a barrel. I created my data to explicitly have that and you'll see that I have very little error because I added very little error to my total model. So I'm accounting for 99 percent of the variance and you can see that everything's significant at the 05 level. And that means that each one of these polynomial terms is significantly different from zero. My moderator M is, is a significant moderator. Now remember, think back in terms of the simple slope and simple intercept that when the moderator is significant it affects the intercept between these two but now also think about this is that this is not a simple curve or a, a simple line excuse me it's a curve because we have a a second order polynomial we have uh, well we have three coefficients we have x to the first x to the second and x to the third and because these are all uh, these these are all orthogonal contrast, polynomial contrast, that these are all um, unconfounded and the multicollinearity by definition is zero. So now what we have is we have orthogonal polynomial contrasts so that we can get a nice smooth curve. We have a significant moderator and we also have significant interactions between our moderator and our polynomial terms. So we have a real mess on our hands. And just to show you how difficult this is, um, I'm going to comment this out. What I'm going to show you is what the curve looks like for my entire data set. And this is what the expected value is for all the x values. Now this is the full range of x that was observed in the data set, minus 2.5 to about 3. And this is the expected y for the main effects. So this excludes any moderator effect. This is just for x and y, x being modeled as a polynomial. But because my moderator is significant, I need to include that. But I also, because my significant moderator is a continuous variable, in order for me to do a rough and ready quick uh, estimate or a quick interpretation of what that effect might be, I do have to do a split on the variable or split it so that I, instead of having a continuous moderator, I need to have a discrete number of, of groupings of that continuous variable. So to make it as simple as possible, I did a bivariate median split and I created means for my moderator for that split and then I plotted the results and this is going to be uh, pretty interesting and you'll see from my comment wow that doesn't look anything like the data and the reason why is that because it's a median split the mean values that I'm using to represent these groups isn't really a very good mean value but <clears throat> you can see that when I do this split what it's saying is that there is indeed a significant moderator so we know that because the um, the the x uh, excuse me the y intercept is going to be different. Uh, additionally, we're going to have since the main effect 
is uh, for x as a linear component, uh, it is related, significantly related to the moderator. So we have a significant interaction. We have a differences in slope immediately um, where the linear component is. And we should expect that. So now we have a linear slope. And if you think in terms of what linear, quadratic, and cubic mean, is that those weights mean that the further away from zero you get, the more influence x has. So x is linear early on in the x values, and then qu the quadratic component kicks in substantially after a um, after x is substantially lower than x squared. And then x cubed, the cubic component, kicks in when x gets even greater. So think about this. So when x is 0, x is 0, x squared is 0, x cubed is 0. When x is 1, x is 1, x squared is 1 and x cubed is 1. When x is two, when x is 2, so on and so forth. x is 2, x squared is 4, x cubed is 8. So now that's when you start seeing a substantial influence in the values for y. It's only when x deviates substantially from 0. And as you can see here, because there is a significant interaction our group classification between uh, the low group and the high group indicates that there's a substantial difference between the, uh, between the two groups with respect to the intercept, with respect to the linear slopes, that's early on, the quadratic, how much it changes at first, and then the cubic, which is how much it's going to shift direction. And while it doesn't mimic the data very well, you can see that at least for the first curve it, it comes close to those red dots. The green one's completely off. So my comment here is, wow, not even close to the observed data. Why not? And that's a point that we're going to talk about during, during class this week is why are these not even close to our observed values? So stay tuned for that and uh, for the class and also stay tuned for what our weekly assignment is and um, and then I'll see you on Thursday.